Hello everyone and welcome back once again to my new video. In this video we are going to talk about something that I've been asked about many times before and just haven't got round to doing but we will be talking about arrays today. This is the first of a two-part series of videos on arrays. It's quite a big topic and today we'll just be going through the basics. We'll be looking at what an array is, some of the basic commands and what you can use them for in your experiences. I'll be giving you a few code examples. We'll be looking at a couple of the commands and we'll be looking at how these very powerful features of programming languages and in turn of the portal experiences can really help you get more out of what it is that you are doing. It is quite a complicated topic if you are not a programmer, um, so just stick with me and I will guide you through as we go. In the next part of the video, once we get there, we will look at some of the commands that are available in Portal to make more use of arrays and explain a few other things. So we're going to do things just a little bit differently today in that I am not going to give you a game or an experience or a product at the end of that. They are just going to be some code examples. However, slightly differently, right at the end of the video and between this video and part two, I'm going to give you a couple of projects to do. So I'm going to give you a couple of experiences that I want you to work on uh, to try for yourself and these little experiences that I'm asking you to work on will just get you to practice using arrays in your experiences uh, and see if you can make use of them yourself see if you've worked out how arrays work in portal as always if you get anything out of this video I would really appreciate a like uh, for the video it really helps me with the YouTube algorithm and if you haven't done so already I would really appreciate it if you would click the subscribe button I am working my way towards a thousand subscribers. Seems like a million miles away, but hopefully I will get there eventually. And you can help me just by clicking the subscribe button. So thanks very much. And without further ado, let's crack on and have a look at arrays. So here we are back in the logic editor and we're just going to have a brief look at what an array is and why they are so useful or powerful when we're writing our experiences and then we're going to give you some sample code about how you can use them. So this little example block that I've got on the screen at the minute, this might be familiar to you. This might be one of the ways in which you might implement something similar. And what we're trying to do here is every time the player earns a kill, it's going to swap to another weapon. Now, some of you might have already spotted that this is a pretty inefficient way of doing it. Um, but you can see that we've got a rule that's when the player kills someone, if the weapon number for the player is one, give them whatever weapon is stored in the variable weapon one and so on. So if the variable weapon number is two, give them the second weapon uh, and the third weapon and the fourth weapon. And you might be looking at that thinking, well, that's crazy. We've just used four variables to store the four weapons. And what if we want to store, I don't know, 20 weapons? Uh, we're going to have to build a very, very long if statement. We're going to need to use 20 variables just to store the weapons. This is definitely not going to work. So traditionally, we just store each thing that we want to store in one single variable, and we're going to need one variable for every single thing that we need to store. So you might be thinking, yourself, that's not a very good way of doing it. So you're going to come up with a better way of doing that. We don't really need variables to store a weapon. So let's try something else. And we're just going to scroll up a little bit. And you've made this a little bit better. Now we don't need the variables. That's brilliant. We've got a slightly better approach here. So this time when the player earns a kill, it's going to select a random number for the player. Uh, just remember, we're not trying to create an experience here. We're just using examples. And you can see that for that player, if the weapon number is one, give them this weapon. If the weapon number is two, give them this weapon and so on. You can see all the way down there. And again, that's uh, that's slightly more efficient. That's a little bit better. And you can see that that would work. And that's probably the way or possibly the way that you do this. Um, if you want to expand that, um, you're going to have to keep building up this very complicated if statement. 
And if you want to add things, um, yeah, your if statement just needs to grow and grow and grow. Let's say you want 20 weapons. Using this method, that would be possible, but you'd end up with a very, very long if statement that might be quite complicated to read. And there's lots of reasons in your experiences why you might want a list of things that you want to either randomly select from or work your way through. Um, maybe you've got a selection of levels. Let's have just have a look. I've got another little block of code just up here. Look. And this has got six levels and maybe we want to work our way through and we're going to have a different message each time the level number increases and this is one way of doing it nothing wrong with that and you can see we've got a message for each level the problem with this is that we are treating each of these things individually and if we just take a look at this you can see that there is some commonality or something common between these things. So you can see we have one, two, three, four, five, six messages, six strings um, that we want to store based on the level number. So let's just have a quick recap. Um, one way of storing data in our experiences and the one that you're probably using so far, if you don't understand how arrays work, is to store each item that you want to store in an individual variable. And that's perfectly fine we store one item in one variable. So for example, we might have a variable for gun one, a variable for gun two, a variable for gun three, and so on. Or we might have a level one, a level two, a level three message, and that's perfectly fine. Um, but one of the big issues with this, aside from the wasting of variables, is in order to select one of those things, you're gonna have to build these complex if statements, and they can get quite out of control. And if we look at the block of code on the screen, you can see that this only has six levels. What if we wanted 20 levels, 30 levels? It does start to get really quite complicated in terms of the if statements, quite difficult to read, and you end up with a screen full of code which is really very difficult to follow and read. So what's the alternative if we don't want to do that? Well, clearly, topic of this video is arrays, and we can use arrays to solve that. So before we go ahead and use and create our own arrays in Portal, it's worth just taking a moment to make sure we understand what an array actually is. So earlier, we talked about storing all of our items in variables, and we would store one item in each variable that we had, one good, need a variable for it. If we have five guns, we need five variables. What about players? If we want to store players, we need uh, one variable for one player or five variables for five players and so on. So we store individual items in individual variables. And you can see the example that I've put on the screen. If we were storing weapons, we might have variables that are gun one, gun two, gun three, and in there we'll store each individual weapon. But what if we used an array? Well, an array is just a collection of items stored under a single identifier. So what does that mean? Well, basically what it means is you have one single variable that you use and you make that single variable store an array. We create an array and place it in a variable. Once we've created that gun array, we can start adding items to it and the items that we add to it will be given an index position in that array. And you can see a little table that represents what an array might look like on your screens at the moment. And this is a gun array. And you can see that index position zero in that gun array. We have the AC42. Index position one, we've got the SVK. Index position two, we've got K30. And you can apply that to anything. Previously, we looked at messages. You could have index position zero, message one one message two, two message three, I hope that makes sense and so on. Now the advantage of doing it this way is that you can select an item from that list by just using its index and this gives us a really really powerful way to go forward if we want to manipulate or deal with large collections of items. To simplify this you could think of it, do we say I want gun one, I want gun two, I want gun three, or do we just say I want whatever's in the gun array at this position. Now we'll have a look at that and hopefully you'll see over the coming examples just why that makes your life a lot easier. But anyway, if you're gonna visualize what an array looks like, think of it like a table uh, with each item in that table given an individual number called its index and you can identify an item in that table just by using its index and you can select it using its index. Right, okay, let's go ahead and put some of these into portal and have a look what that means. Right, so here we are back in the logic editor and you can see I've just got some code there already to go and hopefully that's clear enough for you to see it on the screen. But what I've done here is I've set up the gun array that I've used in the previous example. 
So first things first, I've created a global variable. So I'll go into the variables in the toolbox and create a variable, set it to global and name it gun array. And then on the game started, and of course you can create these arrays whenever you want to, it doesn't really matter, this is just an example, but you can see when the game starts, we are going to create a gun array. And the first thing that we need to do is set this global gun array variable to be an empty array. It's just telling the logic editor that this gun array variable is going to hold an array and we're going to create an empty one to get started. Then all we need to do if we want to add items to this array is just continually use the append to array block. So you can see we've got a bunch of set variables, but each one just applies to the same variable. So the gun array variable, you can see we've got set the global gun array variable to be append to the array. And the append to array block, just in case you're interested, basically returns a copy of an array with the provided value appended to it. So we're going to append to the array this is the array we want to append to and that's the item we want to append to it so you can see we are going to append to this gun array that value and you can see we've just run all the way through and added a bunch of weapons now earlier on in my examples i talked about index positions and places that these items are in your array it's worth noting that the index position starts from zero in these arrays. So the first item that you add, or in this case, the Battlefield 3 A91. I don't know why I chose a Battlefield 3 gun. I should have probably chosen a 2042 one in line with the rest, but never mind. Um, this first gun that you add is going to be at index position zero, because that's the first one you've appended to the empty array. Then the next one will be at position one, two, three, four, five, and six. So the SWS will be at position six or index position six in this gun array. So we've now created an array with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven items in it. And each one of those items is numbered from zero all the way up to six, which is the last item in the array. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well really what we could have done is just created the variables, that's quite a lot of code. Now it's a bit beyond the scope of this video to get into all of the valuable ways in which arrays are extremely powerful. But it's worth bearing in mind that some of the arrays are already created for you, so the new vehicle block, um, if you want to get uh, all of the vehicles that are on the map at any one time, you can just return the vehicles array. If you want to get all of the players that are on the current game, there is a players array. Uh, and we'll have a little bit of a look at that afterwards. So there are already some ready-made arrays, but creating your own arrays, and you'll see very soon just why this is so much more useful than using separate variables and complex if statements. So now I'm just gonna scroll down, I'll show you another example you can see on game mode started again, but of course you can set this whenever you want to. So here we've got another empty array. I have created a global variable. I've called it level names array. And we're gonna store some strings in here or some uh, text items. And you can see, same thing again, we've created an empty array and assigned it to the level names array. And then we have appended all of these items to it and if I want to expand that don't need to create another variable I can just copy that add it to the end and add the next item to it so in this case we will go level four and we could call that um, whatever we wanted to do so just let's uh, do that the pipe line whatever we want to call it there we go I mean of course again with the gun array if I wanted to add some items to that just the same thing, we can extend that array just by adding another item to it. Let's pick another item off the list. Let's go with the MP9. I quite like the MP9, it's one of my favorite guns actually. We've already got it up there. We could duplicate it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, LCMG, there we go. Right, okay. So let's just scroll down a little bit further. Um, it's worth noting you can make arrays out of all sorts of things. So here we've got an array of vectors because, uh, because we can do that. So we've got another variable called objective locations uh, and we've got an empty array and you can see that we have set vectors for each one of those. I haven't actually put the vectors in you can see we are just adding to this objective locations array a bunch of vectors. So you could, I guess, say that um, we've got 
the level names array up at the top and at position zero in the level names array we've got level one strange town and then in the objective locations array at position zero we've got vector one two three one two three one two three so maybe that's the position the vector or the place on the map that level one strange town is positioned and actually there's some power there as well because if we have uh, multiple arrays and the items that are linked across those arrays are at the same index position well then we're on to something really really useful because we know that if we are looking at um, location zero we know that its name is level one and we know that its vector position is one two three one two three a bit too much out of the scope perhaps for this but it's just an idea to float for you there um, just to give you an idea and then of course I've got one last example just down here I think we've kind of labored this point um, we don't want objective locations there we want special abilities but we've got another array there set a variable create a variable called special abilities or whatever you want to call it make it an empty array and then just append the items to that array that you want to add to it and again to add more items to it it is simply a case of appending more items to the list okay so that sets us up with creating um, arrays from scratch um, there are already as I've said some arrays built into the game so there is a player array built into the game and there is a vehicle array or you can create arrays pretty much out of anything that you want uh, you can specify your own arrays maybe you want a group of people you can create your own arrays of players um, there's a lot of flexibility in there but hopefully now you understand how to create your own arrays so let's have a look at some ways in which we can use these in our experiences once we've created them so if you look at the screen now you're going to see a selection of rules that I've created these rules I've created at random but you might want to just pay attention because they may give you a little hint of the direction that you might want to go in if you want to tackle the challenges at the end of this video and you can see all we're doing really is when the player is deployed we're going to take advantage of the fact that we've placed a bunch of guns in the gun array to replace the player's inventory or to replace the player's primary weapon as it happens so you can see that this first one we've got here this rule here we've got to replace the player inventory of the event player that's a pretty standard thing but we've got this block here value in array and this value in array block returns the value found at the provided index of an array and you can see it needs an array so there you can see we've got get players so if you wanted to get a particular player from the players array you just need to pass the index position so you can see we want the value in the array and we're going to get the gun array and we want the gun at position zero so once this player spawns in or when they're deployed they are going to get provided with their inventory is going to be replaced with whatever weapon we are placed in the gun array at position zero now maybe we don't want to use an exact value maybe we've got a variable that changes depending on events in the game and we want to use that instead well we can do look we've got a variable here weapon number that's the global variable We'll just pop that in there it's gone off the side of my screen so i'm just going to scroll across a little bit and you can see now we are going to replace the inventory of the event player we're going to give them whatever value is in the gun array at whatever position is in the weapon number variable now i have to say this is starting to edge towards the power of using an array because now we can identify which weapon we want we don't have to use an if statement at all we don't have to say if the weapon number is one replace the player inventory with this one if the weapon number is two we can just say whatever that weapon number is give them that gun from the array give them that item that's in the array now i'm not going to go through all the commands in this video it would take far too long and there is going to be a part two we're going to run through hopefully if you've grasped this and done some of the challenges at the end we've got a good foundation to build on but i am just going to show you this one so we've got another on player deployed this time it's just going to give the player a random weapon from the array and you can see replace the player inventory for the event player get a random value in an array and we want the value a random value from the gun array so when they spawn in whatever guns we've got in that array they're going to get a random one from that array and hopefully that makes sense and then last but not least we've got this one this is a little bit weird really it's just to show you what we can do um, but we've got on player deployed we're going to wait and every two seconds we're going to replace the player's inventory with a new gun 
Sounds a little bit like a game mode you might have seen on Portal. Two seconds a little bit too short, to be honest. It could get frustrating if your gun's getting replaced by another random gun uh, every two seconds. But, you know, might make the basis of an interesting Portal game. Now, at the moment, you'll just see an example of what this rotate through weapons um, block of code does. And you can see, it's a bit of a silly example again, but you can see just as I'm playing that every two seconds, the weapon is swapped out for the player for another weapon. And all that's happening is this little block, once the player is deployed, is going to keep looping. Every two seconds, it's going to replace the player's inventory with a random gun from the gun array. And hopefully you can see that working quite nicely. So just before we get to showing you the challenges and setting you a little challenge before I release the next video, I'm just going to show you a couple of other little blocks of code that you might want to make use of, or at least you can kind of get the idea of how an array might work uh, from these little blocks of code. Now this first one, very simple one, it's a bit of a nonsense rule again, but it does give you an idea of how you might um, iterate or loop through an array starting from the beginning to the end. So we can see here we've got this rule that's called cycle through players. And again, it's just on player deployed. That's just to make it work for me and my testing. And if you look at the screen at the moment, I'm just showing a clip of this in action. And what you'll see at the top right hand corner is you'll see that the names of each player in the game are being displayed on kind of like a cycle. And every second it's going to the next player, the next player, and just showing each player's name in turn. And again, we've just got this while loop just around the edge just to keep this going through uh, the entire game. Obviously, it depends on your game. You don't necessarily need to do that. That's just for me for testing. And then we've got a fixed loop and we've got a little counter and we're going to loop from zero to the count of the player's array. So this is going to count from zero up to whatever the number of players is and it's gonna increment that by one. In actual fact, when we're using these loops, it doesn't actually count up to that. Just a little bit of a side point about these fixed loops in Portal. If we have four players in our game, this is actually going to loop from zero to three. It actually counts to one less. Now that's handy for us because if you can visualize now from what we've been through, what the player's array might look like with four players in it, you will know that player one will be at index position zero and player four will be at index position three. So this is going to loop through from zero to three and count up by one. It's going to count through the indexes. I hope you can see that. Then we're going to display a message and it's going to say player and then we're going to have a number it's going to have their name and you can see first one's just going to be the counter so we're going to see zero then one then two then three and then we just get the value in the array the value or the array and then we're just going to use value in array we want to look in the get players array so we want to get the players array and then we want to get the value in that array at the counter position Brilliant. Yeah, we can loop through all of the players in the players array and get their names. Um, just as a side point, of course, this count of just gets the number of items in the array. So if we want to get the count of the number of players, we just count off get players and that's going to give us the number of players in the actual game. And you can see that working. So you should be able to look at the top right hand corner of the screen now and just see that cycle continuing. What if we wanted to select a player? or an item from the array at random. Well, we've seen that already, haven't we? We've seen being able to select a random gun. What if we wanted to select a random person to be a high value target? Well, we've got a condition here that just only runs when the player count is 32. So what condition? When the count of the players equals 32. So that's how many items are in that array. And then it says, while greater than game mode time remaining so we've got that loop again set the high value target to be a random value in the players array and then display the game mode message the high value target is now whatever has been stored in that variable and it's going to wait eight seconds and i think you can see what's going to happen is every eight seconds it's going to choose a new high value target which is going to be a random value in the get players array or in the players array i should say just a couple of blocks there for you to kind of have a look at, mess about with, see how you can get used to them. 
Right, okay. A couple of final blocks just to show you, and then I'm going to show you the challenges. It's only going to take a minute or two now you've made it to the end. Hopefully you've got something out of this. Let's just have a couple of blocks that you might find useful for your experiences going forward. We're not going to run through them all, but let's just have a look at a few very useful final few blocks. So last but not least, just before we move on and finish this video, we'll just look at how you can set individual items in the array and get individual items in the array. Obviously you can deal with them on bulk, which we have done already and looked at selecting random values. You can now create your own brand new arrays and add items to it. Um, so you can set an empty array and you can append items to it, but maybe you've got one individual item in there that already exists that you either want to get or you want to change the value of. If you want to change the value of an item in your array, well, you can do that. You just need the index position. So I'm just going to toggle the toolbox just to show you where to get this item from. So we're looking at this set variable index block, and you'll find that under the array section at the top there. And so we've got set variable index. We need the variable that we're altering the item in. Then we need the index position. Of the item that we want to change so in this case we are setting the item in the gun array at index position 2 and we want to now set it to this item so whatever item was at index position 2 is no longer there now we've just replaced it with this item and of course this index position just here we don't necessarily need to put an actual value in there we can change that based on a variable as well. So we've got a variable that has a number in it. We want to set the variable at the index position in the gun array. Let's set the index position that's stored in this weapon number. So we've weapon number equals zero. That's going to give it an index position of zero. And we want to change that weapon to that. So if we want to set an item that already exists in the array, we just need this set variable index block. We give it an array. We give it the index position where we want to change it and we give it the item that we want to change it to. Just be careful when you're using this block that you are trying to alter an item that already exists in the array. So for example, if we change this to index position 10, but there are only nine items in the array, so the highest index position is eight, this is going to fail and you're going to get an error in your code. Um, make sure you're only using index positions that already exist. The more practice you get, the better you'll get at that. And then finally, we have used this before, but just to um, recap, if we want to return an item, so that's to set an item in the array, an individual item. If we want to get an item from the array, we just need the value in array block. This returns an item from the array. It returns it from this array and it is whatever is at that index position. So if we just slot that in there, we're gonna get a game mode message and it's going to say the current weapon is the value in the gun array at this position. And once again, we don't need to use an actual number. We can grab that with a variable if we want to, it just has the same effect. So it's gonna display the current weapon is whatever's in the array at that position. Right, okay, I'm going to stop there. This has been quite a long video for a little bit of an introduction, but I hope you have got a decent uh, look at arrays and kind of a firm foundation to start on. Arrays are, of course, extremely powerful, and I hope in the course of doing this video you've seen some of the ways in which we can really use the power of arrays. There are a lot of pre-built commands already in there, and between now and my next video, maybe you want to explore some of those more advanced commands under the arrays section of the toolbox. Um, we can iterate, loop through arrays if we want to, we can sort them, we can select individual items, we can filter items out of them very easily, we can split them off into different sections, we can do all sorts of brilliant things with arrays that we just cannot do if we store them in individual variables. So I'm just gonna finish and I'm gonna set you three separate challenges to have a go at. Uh, and you can obviously have a go at all three if you want to, and all three of them should be achievable using the skills that you've learned in the video today. I would like to see how you get on with these and feel free to share what you've done share your experience codes, let us know whether you've managed to finish them, whether you have any difficulty, yeah, just let us know what's going on. So the first challenge is make an experience that assigns a random weapon or ability or anything you like, a random piece of equipment to each player every time that they are deployed. That's challenge one. Every time they're deployed, 
assign a player a random piece of equipment. Then, if you've got that, could you have a go at extending that and creating a version of the portal game mode Gun Roulette? Quite popular. In that game mode, the weapon changes after 45 seconds and the player is assigned a random weapon from a pool of weapons. Can you create the Gun Roulette mode which assigns the player a random weapon and changes for all players every 45 seconds rather than when they deploy? The next challenge, challenge number two, is I'd like you to create a free-for-all experience that selects a random player from the pool of players to be the high-value target. When that player dies, select another player from the player pool. I'm going to give you a special bonus here on this challenge for awarding double points when the high-value target is killed. So challenge number two, make a free-for-all experience that selects a random player to be the high-value target. And when that player dies, select another high-value target. Give an extra bonus of double points when a player kills the high-value target. I'd like you to try and extend challenge two if you can do, if you want to have a go at this one. And this one is create a VIP game mode. So each team has a VIP, which is a player that is selected from the game pool from the random selection of players and the opposing team gets a point for killing the VIP and sets the game to win after either team kills 10 VIPs. Now this is quite a challenge. You're going to need to use at least one block that we haven't used so far and you're going to have to think about how this might work. Last but not least, this is going to be a little bit more interesting. This is challenge three. And in this one, I want you to make a free-for-all experience. And this free-for-all experience has a list of 10 locations or places on the map that each of the players must visit. The first player that stands close to the location gets a point. And once all the locations have been visited, the player with the most points wins. So, free-for-all experience, 10 locations that all the players must visit. First gets that location, gets the point, and once all the locations have been visited, the player with the most points wins. Have a go at any of those challenges, all three of you like. Let me know how you get on. That's it for this video. As always, if you've got anything out of this video at all, if you haven't got the challenges, share them with us. I am on my way to a thousand subscribers. This has been a long video. It takes quite a long time to put this together. I would really appreciate it if you just mash that like button and possibly give me a subscribe. If you haven't done so already, it really, really helps me on my way to that 1000 subscribers. If you're stuck with me to the end of this video, well done. That's amazing. Don't think many people will, but if you're here, thanks for watching this video. Part two will be out just as soon as I can put it together and we'll go through all of the blocks under arrays and explain what each one does for you in your experiences. Take care everybody and thanks for watching.